Hey there, Smoke Master D coming at you with another barbecue buyer's guide, and this time to 22 inch kettle grills. All right, so very popular and has been for a long period of time. Let's see which one could be the right one for you. All right, and here I've got some chapter times if you wanted to skip ahead to any certain section. Now, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. We're always trying to get out more uh, videos like this one and uh, other barbecue content. So, all right, so some kettle smoker basics. Very simple style of grill, the basic vertical. So you have um, that air intake at the bottom. You're going to have the charcoal fire on a fire grate right above there. Above that, you're going to have a grate and you're going to have an exhaust damper. All right. And it's all going to be held in this bowl. Okay. This spherical uh, kettle, right? Uh, there's going to be some sort of ash catch. You know, this is the sort of pan below it. But a lot of times there's a cup. Um, you can take off the top uh, and, you know, sometimes there's a hinge. A lot of times there's just a hook for catching it on the side. Uh, and that's it. Now, we're, we're going to see some, some variants on that as we go through some innovation. But this is the basics of what a kettle smoker or grill is. Uh, and there's a lot you can do with them. They're very versatile, but they're also, in a way, very simple. All right, and where can you buy them? Now, there's a lot of places. So kettle grills are, as far as I know, all mass manufactured, right? So they are sold uh, sometimes by the manufacturer online, but they're also sold by a lot of retailers, including all of the ones that you see here. You can find kettle grills on, on all of them. Now, in the description, I'm going to have some affiliate links for Walmart and Amazon. If you'd like to support uh, my channel, you can click on those right before you buy one of those grills from Walmart and Amazon. If they're not the cheapest price, I don't expect you to do that. Um, if you don't want to, I also don't expect you to do it. Uh, but if you, if you do want to support me and you happen to be buying one of these grills from either of those two, it would help me out. And it doesn't cost you anything either. Uh, so thank you very much. And now, the original. Yeah, so we have Weber here. Weber created the kettle grill in the 1950s. So it's been a long time, a long history. And one grill that we don't have on here is the 70th anniversary edition. Uh, if you want to go check that out, you can. It is, I believe, basically, um, I think it's basically the Master Touch, just with some accents, uh, some different colors, if you want it in a different color. So um, it's a little bit more because of that. Uh, so 70th Anniversary Edition, but I didn't include it here. Now, what I did include is the original kettle over here for 139 That has the classic design with the uh, ash pan on the bottom there. We have the premium kettle. Uh, now this Weber Jumbo Joe, okay, so has the Weber name on it, um, but it is sold at Walmart. And then we have the Master Touch Charcoal Grill for two seventy five. dollars So I'm going to walk you through the differences of all of these. All right, so this is the original design here on the left. Now, the Jumbo Joe is basically the same thing, except it has a more shallow bowl. so not quite as deep there. Now, we've got the handle up top with a heat guard, right? So when you grab that, you know that your handle is not going to be hot. The plastic is going to help with that, too. You got the damper to the right. Now, notice that it's metal, so you're not going to want to touch that thing usually with your bare hands. You're going to want to have a pair of tongs there to help you maneuver that um, damper with the four holes and we have the ash catch on the bottom and this next part the one touch ash uh, swish mechanism is actually an ingenious stroke uh, you know this thing's been around for so long that you 
could forget that this is genius, but the swishing mechanism cleans the ash out through the same holes that the air intake comes through, right? So, you know, it's dual purpose. You swish the ash out, and then you set those three arms uh, where you want for how much air you want to come in there to stoke your fire and cook your meat, right? And then the lid hook is the last thing. So this doesn't have any sort of hinge or anything like that. Very simple. And yet it has stood the test of time, has been sold for years and years and years. This very same design, still going strong. All right, and now, uh, you know, Weber, they decided to upgrade uh, and make something even better with the premium, right, which is on the left-hand side. So uh, a few differences, they upgraded the handle there, which has those two sort of hooks. You can put your tongs or your spatula on those hooks on the handle. There's a lid thermometer. It's not going to be terribly accurate to the, the temperature of where the grate is, but it's going to give you sort of a general guide, so that's good. Uh, the hinge grate to help you get more charcoal down there in your fire. Uh, so, you know, the original has no hinge, so you have to sort of lift the whole thing out uh, even while you're cooking. So much more convenient that way. The ash dump is better in, in many regards. It is a cup. You know, if there's wind blowing, it's not going to blow your ash everywhere. Uh, you can just have that cup and it's protecting it. You squeeze those little sides and, and it sort of comes down on those two bars on either side. Uh, you pull it out, you dump the ash, you put it back in. Now, the last thing is this system for the swish mechanism. Same deal. But now it looks like a P rather than just sort of like a, a straight line. And that is going to allow you to do better with trying to get a low and slow uh, because you have more control over the intake. You can just get that P bowl opened up and that's going to be a lot less air coming in than sort of the full line, right? So just, just a little bit easier to create uh, the conditions for low and slow barbecue. So really good that way. Um, and then uh, the very last thing is there's kind of a guide for, for the damper system. You see those three pictures there. That one all the way to the left is, is closed. The middle one is like halfway open. And then all the way to the other end is you know, full on heat, right? So you don't have to sort of duck under the grill to try to look up into the vents to see just how much um, air is going in there. Uh, that guide will give you uh, what you need so that you, you can stay upright. Okay, and now if we look over here to the right, we have the master touch, okay? And one of the the best things, I think, is this plastic tab on, on the top damper. Thing's going to get hot. Uh, if you want to touch it with your hand, that plastic piece is the way that it's going to happen. There's a warming rack. So if you want uh, to extend the amount of space you have in there and you don't have anything too big like a turkey or something, that warming rack could be really good that way. The uh, charcoal baskets are included. Now you can buy those separately, but they are included with this. And uh, you can put those on the side and kind of it helps with low and slow and keeping your charcoal where you want it for cooking. The lid holder on the side, also very nice. Uh, you know, very easy to put the lid to the side that way instead of having that uh, hook. Uh, and the other thing is this replaceable middle section. And when we get to the accessories for the Weber, you're going to see a lot of different things that you can put in there uh, that are kind of exciting, right? So um, it allows you to accessorize even to a further level. Uh, and the last thing, uh, larger, more durable wheels. Um, and when you look at the full picture, you see those, uh, you know, they're going to be better for getting around your yard. 
and probably going to hold up a little bit better too. Okay, and now we have the cart style grills from Weber. On the very left, the original performer, or the regular performer, I should say, uh, 349 uh, nowadays. Uh, in the middle, we have the performer premium for 499. And then lastly, the Weber Performer Deluxe for 549. Okay, and as we do, we're gonna look at um, the first one there, the regular performer. And uh, you know, it it's basically the master touch, but with a few additions. And we've got the fold-down table there. We've got uh, the the bottom storage rack. Uh, those are hooks right there uh, close to the fold down table and and that's it right you know the wheels are a little bit better in fact I think they're exactly the same wheels that the master touch has and then you've got those very small casters on the other side so a little bit more stability um, you know a little bit of prep area and that's basically it now the premium performer over here is uh, very similar as well um, it just has more prep area, more um, of a rack on the bottom, and it has a charcoal container. Uh, apparently, a lot of people use that as a trash can. I'm not entirely sure why you would want your charcoal in there if you have it in a bag, uh, but perhaps you would. And the last thing is a timer. Uh, now, I don't think that that would be particularly helpful, a timer because uh, we have phones now that can, can act as timers. But this next one has an accessory that I think is a little more impressive. Okay, the Performer Deluxe. It has a gas uh, ignition to start your charcoal, right? So there's that dial there. Um, you start the, the gas going and it flames up and cooks cooks your charcoal until it's lit, and then you can turn it off. Uh, I use a, a weed torch. Uh, some people have the grill gun, uh, a lot of different accessories to do similar kind of stuff, but it is nice to have it sort of built in. So, yep, and that is the deluxe charcoal grill. Let's see some of the accessories. Uh, so we've got the covers there. For uh, the 22-inch uh, regular ones, it's 22 bucks. For the Performer, uh, $5.99. And then over there with the Deluxe Performer, $72.99. Now, here we see several accessories that have to do with that middle section for the Master Touch and um, all the cart grills as well. So we see a sear grate there, $59.49. Uh, griddle. Uh, to go in that circle area as well for $59.49. Poultry roaster. So apparently, you know, you set the chicken or turkey, be that as it may, uh, kind of its butt over that hole there. Uh, I imagine that you might be able to put um, a liquid in in that cup. Uh, you can set uh, a bunch of different vegetables in the perforated uh, holder around it and uh, cook that way. And get some really nice uh, bird. So $72.99. Uh, on the far right side, there's a walk for $85.99. This Dutch oven duo is pretty cool. So it's $167.99. But the um, you know, it's sort of a bowl shape there. But you can take the top off and use that as a griddle too. So um multi-purpose. Uh, you can cook um, uh, in in the bowl and in the top, or you can use it to cover it up and, and cook something inside as well. Uh, and then lastly, the rotisserie. So that's $234.99. Uh, I think that it's really cool to have a rotisserie uh, that will work and make this grill sort of a multi-purpose or function grill. And now for the attack of the clones. And what do I mean by clones? So a lot of these next few grills that we're going to look at are copycats of Weber. Let's take a look at those. 
All right, so we're going to start off with the Panther 22.5. Some of these are around 22 inches. Uh, you're going to see that there's a lot of manufacturers that are making grills that are kind of do other things. A lot of them make patio furniture, right? They manufacture and they say, well, why don't we just make a kettle grill? I think Panther is one of these. Uh, several of the ones that we're going to see next are um, strange thing price difference here so uh from tractor supply is right now 64.99 but from walmart it's 112.97 so one thing to be cognizant of is that especially for these mass produced grills you can see a uh, difference in price from different retailers you know they buy it for a certain amount uh and then they can sell it for you know what the the company thinks that it should be sold for or they can just do whatever they want once they own it right so that's that's probably the case here um but you're going to notice that it looks like you know the weber premium in a lot of regards it's got the ash cup the ash cup uh doesn't look like a particularly good one i think that uh it probably works uh, you've got a system for venting that doesn't actually have the arms down there. Uh, I don't exactly know how you get the ash out through the holes uh, the same way that you do with the Weber. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure entirely if the Weber has uh, that patented, but uh, the swivel arms are not there. It does have that warming rack, so that's nice. Looks like it may be attached to the lid so that, you know, when you open the lid on that hinge, that it's going to come up. Uh, you have the rack at the bottom, uh, control dampers. Uh, it does look like that there's a little plastic knob on the top damper, so that's nice. Uh, all in all, uh, maybe this thing would be functional. So, you know, I think it could work. All right, and the next one, the Grill Fest. Uh, so I couldn't find their logo anywhere, so that's just a blown up picture of of the grill over there on the left. They're sold at Walmart, uh, and it is $89.97. You're going to notice that they are very similar in, uh, in their design here. Now, they got a little extra basket down there um, to, to hold a few extra things in. Uh, also has a hinge, also has a warming rack, locking hinge, okay, locking hinge. Now, sliding bottom damper, and the bottom damper is integrated into the cup itself, which I find a little bit concerning, especially if you get a lot of ash in there, it could start blocking the damper and put out your fire. You know, is this the best design? Not sure. Uh, if you own one of these grills, of course, please do comment below and tell us uh, what your experience is with that. So, funny thing about this Kingsford is there's only one other picture that the uh, Kingsford, or Rankham, I should say, people put out there. And it's barely any better than the one we have here. It looks so much like the Grill Fest from what we can see that it's hard to imagine that they're not incredibly similar inside as well. So I'm not going to go into anything further on uh, this Kingsford slash Rankham Grill. All right, and now we come to the Expert Grill. The others, you know, were very, very, very similar. And this one is the first one that is a little bit different uh, and it's 97 dollars, and you can get it from walmart comes with uh the charcoal baskets so that's nice uh it has a stainless grate okay um the lid catch that's not very different deep bowl and even from the picture you can tell that it's got you know some junk in his trunk right <laughs> it's got that deep bowl i like the deep bowl uh, temperature gauge, that's not different. Um, higher damper on the cup, right? So the damper is in the cup, but um, the other ones, it seemed like they're a little bit lower down. This is a little bit higher up. 
Still that possibility of Ash building up to the point where it could choke it out with the damper system there. But it seems like it would take a very long time with that amount of cup down there. So I do think overall uh, a better design than what we saw from the other two. Uh, the idea of being able to burn uh, actual wood down there uh, in on that fire grate. That is interesting. If you own this thing, this expert grill, and you've used real wood, you know, actual splits down there for the fire to cook in, uh, in this thing with, uh, put that in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. All right, and now we have the Laku 22-inch kettle charcoal grill for $102.99 from Walmart. Uh, Laku is another one who makes the uh you know a deck furniture and uh they have no logo image right so they are just a name laku um i guess they decided they didn't need to invest in a logo and again um some very similar looks to uh the other clones all right and uh <laughs> i i just thought that these images that uh i guess they're uh, advertising team or, or what have you decided to put on here were just so I don't know I don't know what the word is for this they put uh, you know the ash cup and they decided to make it see-through so you could see ash inside of it um, yeah why they did that just kind of the other thing that really sort of tips me off that this uh this company must be you know foreign probably chinese is uh the word there durable wheel instead of durable wheels um a nice little plastic piece there on the top vent um the grate there thermometer uh heat proof handle so um yeah again that uh design for the intake on the cup uh, a lot lower than I think I'd like it. It looks like there's more holes, though, um, uh, around the cup. So that might be a little bit better than uh, some of the other ones previously. Uh, but I think that those holes should and could be higher up on the cup. Stepping up. All right. So uh, we are out of the clone section and let's see who else we have here all right we're gonna start with charbroil now i am doing this by price right except for weber uh, i just felt like they deserved to go first um but you know again we have a difference in price and this is from amazon itself apparently if you want to buy the blue charbroil kettleman uh true infrared charcoal grill it is $149. Uh, if you want black, it is $237.89, uh, which makes me wonder uh, how much black paint could be <laughs> if you just wanted to buy uh, the blue one and paint it, right? Uh, I guess they, they made a bunch of these blue ones and nobody wants to buy them. <laughs> uh, I think that that must be what happened. But if you want a blue grill, uh, boy, is that a good price for you. Um, now, down at the bottom, we have the cover there for $19.59. This charbroil grill is perhaps, um, it is, it's incredibly different from the Weber. I mean, it is not trying to copy Weber at all, at all, at all, at all. Um, and the first thing that's going to tip you off to that is this oxygen intake and you can see that it's all these holes around the bottom and what you're also going to notice is that there isn't a bottom damper right those holes they're just open okay so they're open all of the damper is at the top and it's right in the center okay it's not it's going to make it so that it's not a two zone grill right so on the other grills you know you have the damper on one side you set up your charcoal basket on the other side and the side that's not directly over the charcoal basket that's your sort of cooler zone right but 
this with the damper directly on the top the uh you know you can try to put charcoal to one side but it's not really going to work quite as well the other thing is that we have these true infrared grates and the grate you see at the top as opposed to the one on the bottom is for a gas grill right but it shows you the little perforated holes so very small holes now you may have seen grates like this as sear grates, right? The idea is that um, those small holes are going to keep the grease from dripping down into the fire. Okay, so it's sort of multi-purpose in that they're going to keep the uh, keep it from flare-ups, so you're not going to have any flare-ups. It's also going to keep the hot gases from coming up straight through. So the temperatures are going to be fairly even across the entire grate here for this charbroil grill. Uh, the other thing, if you take a look over there on the right side, is that the charcoal is up above those holes. It is incredibly high, basically like right under the grate. But with those tiny holes being there, uh, you know, that heat's not coming directly up quite how you would think for its proximity to the fire grate. When I said this thing was very different, it is incredibly different <laughs> uh, from the Weber. So, and, and that damper is also very different too. The damper on the top. The more you open it, the cooler this grill is actually going to be. Completely opposite of all the other ones right because the damper on the top actually is keeping the hot air in as opposed to drawing air through the grill because of those very small holes in the in the grate it's it can't really draw air into the fire like the other grills so when you open those holes up it's just letting the air out you're going to have to have some hole there for, you know, for oxygen to, to filter through. But the more you have it closed, the hotter this thing is going to get. So all in all, this thing is very interesting. I don't know if I would say better, but different. Uh, the last thing is um, the ash catch on the bottom just slides in and out, right? It's got that weird little metal piece that kind of holds it in place. So it's a sliding ash pan. All right, and now we have the MF Studio 22-inch portable kettle um, from MF Studio, which, again, even when you take a look at their logo, uh, you see that little table, the little chairs. So these people, they also make uh, furniture for the outdoors. That's what they do. And this is their grill. So, you know, um, the price, one fifty seventy is is what kept this thing out from being a clone. Uh, could it be a clone, too? I guess that's for you to decide. A porcelain coated grate. I think we may see that one or two more times. Lid attached thermograph. Uh, I included that just because the word thermograph is one that I almost never come across. So we know that these people who made this are, are foreigners, um, but what kind of foreigners, I suppose, is, is the real question that they came upon the word thermograph uh, and decided, yeah, that's the one we should put in there. Um, could they be British? I don't know. Uh, if you use the word thermograph very frequently, please comment below on why you do such a thing. Uh, one thing thing is that this cup here that may uh, be a clue as to the higher price is porcelain coated. So a porcelain coated ash bowl. It does appear that the um, damper system is not connected to the ash cup, which is more in line with the Weber Premium grill. So I think all in all, it's probably better overall. Uh, just those two things. This thing is cheaper than the Weber Premium, 
Uh, and it seems to be fairly similar. Uh, I don't think that it has the hinge grate uh, there. Um, there may be one or two other differences, but uh, it seems to be um, close enough maybe for some people. So, all right. And now we come to um, a company that's a real competitor to Weber, right? We're, we finally arrived Charboil, you know, theirs, theirs was certainly interesting. Um, but some of these grills are going to actually take stepping up uh, to a new level. But uh, first we have that Napoleon Rodeo Kettle uh, for $269. So you can get this cover that's for the uh, Rodeo as well as the Pro for $50.99. The uh, Pro Charcoal Kettle is going to be $399 on the napoleon website seems like it's not sold on amazon at least um it seems like the pro cart is the much more popular option it's all the way to the right and it is 5.99 and is actually the most expensive grill i think uh in this whole show all right so uh in the rodeo kettle uh we have a hinged grate uh, so kind of, um, you're going to notice this thing's pretty, pretty well a good competitor for the Weber Premium, uh, and maybe even the Master Touch. Um, so there's a diffuser plate here, but it is under the charcoal. Most of the diffuser plates that I have come across, uh, you know, on drum smokers especially, uh, are above the charcoal diffusing the heat. This one apparently diffuses the oxygen so that it completely surrounds the coals, which really is what uh, these uh, charcoal baskets do that you put to the side. So, um, you know, this thing's going to probably be a little bit more efficient with the charcoal as to whether um, that's really a great thing or, or not. It's hard to say. Um, it does have, uh, looks like the lid catch, uh, lid hook there. At the top, there is um, a damper that is metallic. It's completely metallic. So it, uh, it looks like it's going to hold up to the years well. You got the plastic little handle. So sort of more in line with the master touch there. There is a step down air damper. Uh, kind of like, um, <laughs> if you watch, uh, Chud, uh, who, who has an offset smoker, he's got a little handle he takes out and he can put it in little divots, uh, to have the door to his firebox open by different degrees. seems like that's kind of a similar kind of way that you have this step down for this air damper that is also, uh, part and parcel with the ash catching cup. Okay, now, most everything is similar to the Pro charcoal kettle, except for a few main differences. Uh, we see that they have the grate is going to be this cast iron. I think that it is also porcelain coated, but it is hinged, right? It uh, has these wavy lines that are probably going to look really cool on your steaks when you sear them. One thing that really they didn't have any good pictures of is the three-level grate system. And you can uh, find some reviews out there of people with this grill, and they'll, they'll show it to you. But you see that little hole there that I have the yellow square around? So basically, there's tabs on this grate, and there's holes um, for the three levels, and you kind of take those handles for the grate, and you maneuver the tabs through those holes and you can go all the way down three levels. If you want to be searing right over the coals, you can. And if you want to be all the way at the top for low and slow cooking, you can be there too. The whole distance as per radiant heat and getting down there to really get a good sear. Uh, this, this thing looks like it can do it, right? Got a really nice offset hinge as well. 
Um, so I like the the multi tier system of the Napoleon there. And then, of course, the last thing that we have is the cart itself. Cart looks nice. Fold down side table. Those wheels may may be the the best looking ones we've seen so far. Uh, you know, uh, nice axes coming out of the middle there. Uh, yeah, uh, the cup looks good too. All right, and we've got a few accessories here. Uh, cover for the um, regular one with legs. Uh, you know, which would be the rodeo and the pro is $50.99. And then the one with the cart is $61.99. Some charcoal baskets there for $41.99. A warming rack for $27.99. And I bet, I bet if you bought that warming rack and had a different style grill, that it would still work, you know. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind. All right. And now we have the slow and sear grills. Uh, and you see the slow and sear here on the side. It is a sort of charcoal basket that gets the charcoal to one side of these kettle grills. Has that water reservoir. Um, it's really great for these two zone, the two zone cooking. And they've been making this accessory for a while, and they made it for the Weber grills, and they made other accessories, and then finally they decided, you know, hey we can make our own kettle grill. And this is what they came out with. And let's see what we think about it. The thing is you can buy uh, the original without the slow and sear for $2.99. Uh, add the slow and sear on the regular one and it's $3.34.99. And then if you want the deluxe one, you see the deluxe down here at the bottom, it kind of has a grate underneath uh, there to sort of hold the charcoal in even better, I suppose. And it is $379.99. And let's take a look at this. A lot of things uh, that are similar to the Master Touch, but a few maybe improvements. I guess it's up to you to decide. Uh, that lid cradle on the side, just like the Master Touch. It has uh, the... And this is one place where it starts getting different. The Easy Spin Grate. Now, they've been selling the Easy Spin Grate separately for, for a long time. And, of course, they have it here. The thing about the Weber Grates is the handles on the side, uh, that wire that comes around, also sort of goes down a little bit. And when you try to spin it, it's going to catch on the little tabs that are holding the grate up. So... The easy spin grate doesn't have um, anything that goes down below, so you can just spin it freely. And they made these hinges to go up at just the right distance for adding charcoal, but not so far as you would uh, be able to put charcoal in the reservoir. So they just made it to be uh, exactly the right size, right? As far as their two-zone cooking system, everything is engineered sort of to work with that, uh, including this low and slow damper. Now, you see that they have um, a regular damper system that is uh, almost identical to Weber's. It has uh, five of these arms that go out, kind of like a starfish, and it is... We'll have a swishing mechanism to get the ash out through those holes, just like the Weber, right? Uh, five arms instead of three. But the one other thing that they have is you can close all of those up and just use this low and slow damper, which is smaller. It's going to allow you to get much less oxygen in there to get a really low temperature that you might want for cooking, you know, maybe 225 for your pork butt right in this two zone cooking system and you can see over here on the cup where they have that little handle um, wire handle that comes out for uh, swishing and and dampening with the the star shape thing there so very similar that way they have a nice looking stainless steel cup that comes off uh, and the very last thing the handle has the hooks just like the uh the premium handle for the Weber uh, and and they have a probe port 
right there. You can thread your probe through uh, that little hole. There it is. It's it's nice. You don't have to sort of crunch down on your probe's wire uh, with the lid, right? Um, so uh, overall, it seems like like a nice little improvement there. And here we have some of those accessories. Uh, the rotisserie here, $199.99, which I believe Weber's rotisserie was over $200. This looks like it has some stainless steel going around. All in all, this could be much better, uh, much better as, as far as a rotisserie goes. Uh, over here we have the elevated cooking grate, $49.99. Flat top plancha, $99.99. You know, if you want to make those smash burgers, looks like it could be really uh, a good accessory to have. I may have to get one of those at some point. Um, so the dripping griddle pan over here is really interesting. They also have the mini drip pan. One thing about this two-zone system that they have is, you know, you have your, your fire over on one side and... You have your meat on the other that you're cooking low and slow. And the drippings are going to come down and they're not going to get burned up in the fire because there's no charcoal over there, right? They're just going to be down on the bottom of the uh, kettle. So what to do about that? You need a drip pan and they're selling you one. The, the thing about this dripping griddle pan is it will double as a griddle. You take it up. You put it over that charcoal section, and all of a sudden, there it is. It's a griddle. It may not be the, the, the plancha, but if you just want to do a little bit of griddling, there it is. Uh, charcoal cherry picker. Now, when I want to move around my charcoal, I usually just use my barbecue tongs. But if you want an accessory that is just for charcoal... The charcoal cherry pickers for you, $19.99. Okay, and here we go with the Oklahoma Joe's uh, smoker. And it looks so Oklahoma Joe-ish, doesn't it? Uh, those wheels, everything about it. Wow. The Blackjack Charcoal Kettle Grill, $3.29, and uh, the cover for $29.99. Okay, and let's take a look here. Uh, so we've got the wagon wheels, uh, you know, as this thing's thick, it looks a lot like an Oklahoma Joe's. You look at the stack there. This is the only kettle with a stack, right? <laughs> so the stack, very reminiscent of, uh, you know, the Oklahoma Joe Longhorn, even the thermometer there looks like it came right off of, uh, um, one of, one of their offset smokers, the, uh, great appears to be uh, some thick gauge wire uh, coated in porcelain enameled i believe the air intake i do like it's 360 degrees so it's going to get uh, oxygen in from pretty much all directions so that is good uh the grate can hang on that uh, towel bar there so modular shelf system you can take out the towel bar you can buy an extra shelf and put it in there is just two holes that are welded onto the side that can take in the round bars that the uh, towel bar or or the uh, shelves uh, you know come with so you just put them in and mix and match however you want there the one unforgivable aspect of this grill is the ashtray which is drop in so unlike all the other kettle grills that we've seen up to this point to get this thing out you have to open the lid one two you have to take out the main grate three you have to take out the fire grate four you have to lift out the ashtray hopefully it's pretty large but if it fills up during a cook that could be really inconvenient and it's just inconvenient anyway right so I'm not going to forgive the Oklahoma Joes for that. Uh, that's all I can say about it. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's a step back instead of a step forward. That's what I think about that. 
So, uh, Kamado Joe, we have the Kettle Joe 22 inch charcoal grill. Now it is, and this is a really strange thing. Labor Day is about to come up, and I think barbecue guys may have their sales going. They took a hundred dollars off this thing. Right now, it's three ninety nine from Barbecue Guys and four ninety nine from Amazon. So, really, a huge difference in price. The cover is fifty nine ninety nine. A uh, big side note here, Kamado Joe. For their Kamado grills, they have a lot of accessories. Uh, the dojo, pizza cooker. They have the jotisserie, rotisserie cooker that you can fit into their uh, Style 3 grills, right? Um, they have a lot of different cooking surfaces that are half moons for their divide and conquer system. None of those are completely compatible with this Kamado Joe Kettle Joe 22 inch charcoal grill. And the reason they're not um, compatible is that this has 22 inch diameter. The classic has an 18 inch diameter and the big Joe has a 24 inch diameter. So all those half moons you can put on the grate that is already there in the Kamado Joe. And you can make them work that way. They're not gonna fit, you know, perfectly in that space, right? They're gonna have to be the classic. Uh, and the thing about that is you could do that for any of these grills, really. Um, they're not gonna have the divide and conquer system that we're gonna see on the next page with two levels. Uh, but you could, you know, put the soapstone or, or whichever ones you wanted you could put those on any grill grate uh, just like you can here. They don't fit in like they would on, on the actual Kamado grill that Kamado Joe's makes. So um, I think a lot of people maybe wanting a Kamado Joe are going to look at this and say, well, this is just like a Kamado Joe uh, Kamado grill. And that's not the truth. So, big side note on that, but let's take a look on the inside anyway. So, we've got the fold-down shelves. Uh, they have really nice shelves. They are um, going to be made of material that is going to be able to take the heat of you taking off something really hot to put on there. Storage for the slow roller below. Now, the slow roller is really cool. They made it for um, their third series of Kamado grills, and it uh, creates convection. It just doesn't exist otherwise, right? So you're going to have your meat on the top there, and you put the slow roller in. A lot of smoke is going to be hitting that meat with a lot more velocity. Uh, you're going to get a lot more convection cooking heat up through there, so, you know, it's it's, it's not going to be the radiant heat off the fire below. Uh, there's enough stuff between it and, and that uh, that a lot of the heat you're going to be getting on your meat is from the air. And you want the velocity of that air. And, um, you know, I think that for uh, low and slow cooking, it is a really great option. So I praised it before in uh, my video on Kamado grills. And I'll link that above if you want to see it. But yeah, really cool that way. And to make it work, they have the adjustable hinge down here at the bottom left. Uh, they have a, the ceramic firebox. Same thing from the, uh, you know, their Kam Kamado grills. The divide and conquer has two levels. I do believe that there's a third level in the one that they have for, for their Kamado grills. Um, but, you know, if you want something cooking at higher heat, something cooking at less heat, higher up, that can be really fun. Again, most of uh, the half moons that they have are not going to fit exactly on those those grates there. But they, uh, you know, you can try to make it work. You got the ash drawer. You just pull it right out. So that's nice. You see the uh, the fire basket coming down there to hold everything together on top of that. Uh, casters on it, very small casters, but casters nonetheless. 
uh, this thing will do some serious grilling for you. And now it's time for charts. All right, so we're going to start off with the price. Uh, the ones down there with the yellow um, around them, they have the sale price. Anywhere I, I showed two prices, I'm going to show you those uh, differently on, on the next slide. So we got the Panther down there, cheapest is 65 and a sale price. Uh, the Weber Jumbo 22 and the Grill Fest. Uh, I just like you to be able to see sort of visually what all the differences in prices are from, from lowest to highest. You go over there, uh, Kingsford, Expert Grill, uh, the Lacou, the Weber Original 22 there, right, for 139 uh, The Charboil, you see it's the blue one. Uh, the MF Studio, the uh, Weber Premium 22 there at 219 I think the other colors are a little bit more expensive. Uh, I can't remember if it was like 230 or something. Um, so then we have the Napoleon Rodeo, uh, the Weber Master Touch 22, the Slow and Sear up there, the Oklahoma Joe uh, Blackjack at 329, Weber um, Performer Regular, then uh, the, the Napoleon Pro, the Kettle Joe. Okay, so that's the special uh, sale price there. Weber Performer uh, Premium, Weber Performer Deluxe, and then Napoleon Pro Cart all the way up there at five ninety nine, just about six hundred. We're gonna take a look here. You're gonna notice the Panther has changed places. It's come over several places. The Charboil is also over several places up there at 238, the black one. The uh, Slow and here, it did change places. It's the Cattle Joe that didn't change places. Its bar is, is higher than it was. Um, the Slow and Seer, you know, has gone up one place. It jumped over the Blackjack. All right, and now we're going to take a look at the weight uh, and I know not all materials cost the same. Plastic doesn't uh, cost the same as metal, but metal does weigh more than plastic. Um, so, you know, I think that the weight kind of gives you an idea of the material you're getting. Uh, you see the Kingsford is all the way down there. Panther as well, around 20 pounds. Grillfest 23, MF Studio at 26.8. Uh, the Weber Jumbo Joe at 28, Lacou 28.48, uh, Weber Premium 22 is 32.3, original is 33, I don't know if it's actually weighs more, you know, sometimes they round, give you different uh, numbers, it's probably about the same, uh, the slow ones here, 38 after that, Master uh, Touch 22 inch, 47.5, uh, the Charbroil is 48, the Napoleon Rodeo 57, a Napoleon Pro 62, Oklahoma Blackjack. You know, it's going to be thick because it's Oklahoma Joe's 64. Um, the Weber, which it looks like I needed to get it over a little bit. Uh, the Performer Regular is 71 there. Uh, Weber Performer Deluxe 96 uh, as well for um, the pre Premium. Uh, the Napoleon Pro Cart at 100, and the Kettle Joe up there at 107. And then dollar per pound. Uh, the Expert Grill wasn't included on the last one. It's not included on this one. Uh, I couldn't really find a way to get in touch with Walmart to find out about it. It's made by Walmart, apparently. Uh, and, you know, they seem to be very difficult to contact, so I didn't try. It's not here. Uh, now, the dollar per pound gives you sort of an idea of the value. I'm not doing square inches on this one. All the square inches should be round about the same. You know, there are some with that warming rack. That is what it is. If you want one, you know, you can buy them separately to throw on the, the grate. So I'm not going to deal with that. But what we see here with the dollar per pound is that uh, Weber Jumbo Joe is doing the best. The Grill Fest after that, 
the charbroil, and it is the blue one, right? I use the sale prices on here. So it's there, the Lacou Kettle Joe, again, $100 cheaper. So it's way up here as opposed to back some. Um, the Weber Original 22, uh, the Napoleon Rodeo, the Panther, the Kingsford, uh, the Weber Performer, uh, regular, um, the Oklahoma Joe Blackjack, Weber Performer Premium, MF Studio, Weber Performer Deluxe, uh, the Weber Master Touch 22, Napoleon Pro Cart, Napoleon uh, Pro there, just regular Weber Premium 22, and the uh, Slow and Sear way back up there with 787 per pound. And the thing about this dollar per pound is it doesn't really uh, give into account the innovation, right? So like having the Slow and Sear way over there on the side uh, it doesn't really tell you or maybe it does tell you sort of in an opposite kind of way how much they think their innovations worth there to make it what it is right so it's not the end all be all of this dollar per pound chart um and that's why i'm giving my thoughts i try to think through these things and think what i thought was good or not you have your own thoughts, you know, and, and if you want to, please put those thoughts down in the comments. Uh, you know, I would read them. Maybe some other people would read them, too. Uh, let's see what I thought. So these are all the ones for under 50 or, or under 150 or 150 and under. Uh, and yeah, the best bargain and, and the for, last chart did show this was the Weber Jumbo Joe. $70. It's a good price. If you only have $70 get it you know that's that's the one for you best sale price 150 for that blue charbroil kettleman uh the thing's gonna do a really good good job searing for you uh so for 150 dollars having just a, a sear grill hey and i i do think you can get the the temperatures lower with opening up that vent uh so it could be a good deal would I pay for the black one? No, I wouldn't. But the blue one, I'd think about it. Uh, best knockoff Weber Premium there is the Expert Grill. I know I didn't have the weight on it, but I love that deep bowl. Uh, just something about it, the idea of using, you know, a real wood, uh, wood splits there. Just love it. And the best original. Um, you can't go wrong with the original kettle for $139. Uh, I know that it's a little bit more than other, some of these other ones, but it's well-made. People like it. They've been liking it for a long time. It's tried and true. All right, on the premium level, so this is going to be uh, between 151 and 350 and these are all the grills there. You know, that Charbroil made it into uh, the second round. Uh, I don't think it's going to come off quite as well in this one, though. Let's take a look what I think. Uh, so there's two. Uh, best quality and versatility, the Weber Master Touch for $275. Uh, best innovation, the Slow and Sear Kettle. Uh, in truth, um, now I do like, I do like for the Weber, I like that middle section that you take out. I like it. What can I say? I like the idea of putting different things in there, like a sear grate or, uh, you know, um, a wok or, uh, a Dutch kettle, you know, um, whatever it is. Uh, I like that. Um, everything else about it, it's fine. It's good. The slow and sear though, uh, maybe is a little bit better. I think the two zone cooking system that they have created, uh, is going to work really well for making amazing food and you can do it in the Weber, you know, you can definitely do it in the Weber and you know if the weber is 275 and and just the slow and sear itself is about 300 uh you know really all you're paying for for that extra 25 dollars is that side table um you know i guess you have that the probe port and uh the low and slow uh thing which really i think the p-shaped uh intake for the weber 
uh, is is as good as is the um, low and slow uh, intake. So really, it comes down to twenty five dollars for a pro port and a side table, which you know you have to decide whether that's what you want or not. Uh, to have uh, to have some of the upgrades in it already for for the uh, slow ones here could be worth it. And in truth, I'm going to give a slight edge to the slow and sear uh, kettle. I do think that it is a little bit better than the Master Touch. So there it is. But I think that if you have the Master Touch, you're doing pretty well too. And then my thoughts on cart and multi-level. All right, here, let's see what I think. Uh, and I decided to throw in the Amazon stars for all of these. You're going to notice that Weber is the highest, right? Uh, people have been happy with their Webers for a long time, and a lot of people are willing to say that. Uh, and that should, I think, make a difference, right? Which is why uh, the best bargain in this cart and multi-level thing, I'm going to say uh, the Weber Performer, 349. Uh, I think that you are going to be happy with it. It's going to meet your expectations. Everything from the master touch there with some of the extra things um, like uh, the cart. It is the cart, you know. <laughs> um, and the multi-level, I'm going to give it to the M Napoleon Grills Pro Cart. I really like that three-level system which is one more level than the Kamado Joe. And you may be wondering, you know, why didn't I put the Kamado Joe here? And I'm going to tell you why, because this is, is my thoughts, right? I think that if you want a Kamado Joe, you should get a Kamado grill. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, and, and could you really enjoy the Kettle Joe? You could, right? But... In all, I think that if you want the Kamado Joe experience, the Kettle Joe is not really where it's at, right? I think uh, all the exciting kind of stuff about Kamado Joe is happening in their Series 3 Kamado grills. And I know they're wildly expensive, but I kind of feel like if you're going to get the Kettle Joe, you're going to always be sort of in uh the dim reflection of the com the the better kamado grill brother that that is my feeling for it right and and could you like it could you ignore all that you could uh the the two level system um there's one uh one guy out there who reviewed it and he really didn't like the ceramic the ceramic's gonna hold its heat in if you get the temperature of the grill too high for what you want to do it's not going to come down very easily and the ceramic is part of that and that's a disadvantage that uh you know the the kamado grills have so it has built in with that ceramic firebox one of the disadvantages of the kamado grills but it has almost none of the advantages that kamado joe has worked in with all the accessories you know and and Apparently, it leaks a bit of smoke around uh, around the kettle um, top. But like I said, I think it could work really well for you. I just think that, you know, if if I were you, I'd save up your money. I'd get a real Kamado Joe, uh, Kamado grill. That's what I'd do. And if I wanted a multi-level kettle, I would go with the, the Napoleon Grills Pro Cart. It's 600 It's expensive. But it is what it is. It's the top level of its line. The Kamado Joe is the, the bottom level. <laughs> you know, it's the least of its of its kind. That's that's the way that I look at it. And maybe you look at it differently, and that's fine. All right, and as always, please add your own thoughts uh, about all these grills. And if you own one especially, please put your review in the comments. Uh, thank y'all for staying with me. And you know what, y'all? Go get your smoke on.